It's Josh Williams here with another bonus episode of the One Man Podcast. My guest today is uh, the winner of both the Boston and Seattle comedy competitions. He's got his own show in Las Vegas, and he's got an album out, comedy album, of course, called Who Wants Me Now? My guest today, Tommy Savitt, also known as the Tommy Lama. Thank you so much for joining me today. The pleasure's all mine. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad to have you. Um, so I don't even know where to start. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to tell everybody right off the bat, the most important thing I want you guys to know is that uh, Tommy is here at Absolute Comedy in Ottawa all week. So uh, this episode is coming out Friday, which means you have two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, and a show on Sunday to come check them out. Are you here again next week, or is it just this No, week? this is it. I'm completing the leg. Nice. Okay. Well, that's so that's your guys' opportunity to come out. Of course, Absolute Comedy is sponsor, so absolutecomedy.ca. For all great shows, everyone's fantastic all the time, but make sure you, uh, you don't miss your opportunity to see the Tommy Lama here at Absolute Comedy. Now, I always... Uh, this is what the the third city that you've done on this particular run, right? You've already that been is Toronto, correct. Kingston. How were those shows? Great. Uh, Kingston is uh, <clears throat> actually uh, my favorite club, really? actually of this run, uh, because the um, the people are, are uh, eclectic. That was that. <laughs> uh, it's an amalgamation, a melding of people that don't really blend. That normally you would never get them in one room. Right. Where you get a uh, like. Any college kids and prison guards. Right. And it's an unusual meld. Well, it's like a prison where just ever that's where they stick everybody. <laughs> right. And it's just so it's like a blue collar with a white collar streak in them. Right. Uh, and it, it adds a uh, it's 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 uh, pungent. It's pun <laughs> a pungent flavor. If you like that, if you like 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 I would compare it to an Dorian. If you ever had that fruit, it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea. Is that that it's one a, that's got that like weird cheesy cream? Yes, cheesy -looking yes, texture it's, or yes, it's, it, yes, yes. It's disgusting, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's unique. It stands out. I feel that way about tomatoes. To be honest with you, I don't yeah, like tomatoes. Yeah, and uh, so it's a funky, funky kind of place, yeah. and uh, I like it because you know it's not an amalgamation you normally see. Right, and so well, and you know you're getting a little bit of everybody too. It's not just for one type of crowd kind of thing. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Uh, that was a lot nicer than what Joe said about it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Joe didn't like it? Uh, yeah, I think he was just saying like everybody there was... was well, I don't want to say he didn't like it, but uh, he was definitely like, yeah, Kingston's an interesting just place. That wasn't just a club. He had a good time at the club, but he was just saying just everyone you meet. Well, you know, it's all about vision. I mean, uh, it's all about perception. Like... When you don't have a car, you're limited in what you, uh, so just because, you, you know, so you walk up the block and that's your impression of Kingston. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, so it's, you know, we could be myopic or we could uh, really open up our minds. Right. Right. And uh, take in the funk. <laughs> take in the funk. I like that. It's like getting a, a big whiff by a garbage dump. Not mm -hmm. necessarily Kingston. I just, that's the fear. With the big and I love the downtown in Kingston, all two blocks of it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what everybody asks. Is this it? I go, yeah, that's it. But it's nice by the water. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, I, I, and I've uh, eaten at uh, their fine establishment something, uh, something that's called the something pig. Oh, I've, oh yeah, it's, 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 it's highfalutin. Highfalutin. It's highfalutin. It's classy place. So. What did you have? Um, what did I have there? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, Oh, yes, I do. I had the tofu steak. The tofu steak. The tofu, okay. something like that. Okay. No, no, no. I stand corrected because I would never order tofu uh, because <laughs> I would never. I find it repulsive. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I know why I mix it up, I, but it, it, cauliflower steak. Okay. A, they prepped the cauliflower like as if it was a steak and they, it was really good. They keep it like cattle outside. For yeah, <laughs> cattle. Outside. <laughs> well, they're, it's like they're, you don't see the steaks out back. Their slaughter system is a little inhumane. Uh, you may it may come out in the news. This I saw in the kitchen the blood. It's not pretty. It's <laughs> hysterical. I just try to imagine just a bunch of cauliflower walking around. No, there. yeah, they shoot that pin yeah, gun into it. it, it it's, it's 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 going to be the next thing that's out there. People don't. I'm not aware of this of this situation. Okay, that's why I'm working with the Dalai Lama now in Tibet to bring awareness to this situation. The cauliflower. A lot of cauliflowers are going headless. <laughs> Oh, that's good. We're off to a good start already. It was a good meal, though. It was a good meal. No, definitely something. There's something pig. 
it's called. Okay. I'll look at it. I feel like yeah, 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 just you're using yeah. huge words that I don't know, so I feel like I should have my, my, yeah, my yeah. dictionary. And then I, I, I drank a whole bottle of wine by myself. Excellent. White or, uh, white or brown, I was going to say. that. Makes it, was red, red. it was red. Which is stupid because you don't order the, the wine before the meal, and I did that. You don't get, with cauliflower, you don't get red wine. Right. Stupid. Is it? <laughs> stupid. I did a stupid thing, but, you know. You learn from your mistakes, and that's what you know. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> I like that. That is a good philosophy of yours. I, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm starting to learn. My, my mother has recently started taking better care of herself. I've talked about that in the podcast a little bit, but uh, she's, she started making like the cauliflower mashed potatoes, mm-hmm. and that I understand. So she's like, it's better for you because it's not like regular potatoes. But then you have to put like a whole stick of cream cheese in it or whatever to give it like, right? You know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But I, I'm fascinated by some of those tofu. I know how it sticks together because it's like a sponge or whatever. But how did, did, did it actually have any kind of texture? Or yeah, yeah, like that? Like yeah. A, it was. It held together nice. Really. And I, I, you had to cut it with a knife. Honestly. And it was, yeah, and it was, it was tasty. That's amazing. I'm tasty. And they had carrots there. in there and. Okay. Yeah. Like kind of like a veggie burger in the sense they put a bunch of things in with it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just like a giant. No. Piece no. Of it was color. like it was it was shaped as a steak. Okay. And uh, they had other accoutrements. Wow. You know, to it, uh, it was very. It was it, it was interesting. Nice. I, I'm not gonna look it up later because that seems interesting. I mean, again, I'm a huge dude, right? So I'm like, I don't know if it's not a baconator. You know. Right. 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 Turn my nose a bit. Like my dog. My dog won't eat stuff like that, but. It does sound fascinating. But now you're in Ottawa. Yes. Do you have any favorite places to eat while you're there? Yeah, here? what's that restaurant? Um, it's very impressive. Uh, they treat you like a king uh, when you say you work for the Absolute Comedy Club. It's an Italian restaurant. It's on the same block as the club. Right. The, it's just um, a little up. Uh, not, uh, uh, come on, come on, come on. Giovanni's? I think it's Giovanni's. Yeah. And I was there last year. I'm going to go again this year. Uh, but it, uh, you know, I, I got the news I was getting Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to celebrate. And I, yeah, what's your special? They go, well, we got the Wagyu steak. And, you know, I didn't, you know, and he didn't tell me the price. Okay. That's always fun. Right, right. And then uh, it was Wagyu and some seafood. And I said, what should I get? I asked the server, what should I get? He said, oh, well, you got to go for the Wagyu when it comes in. And, uh, okay, well, let's go with the Wagyu steak. Three hundred dollars later. Are I'm not serious? joking. Oh, my I'm not God. joking. Three hundred. Three hundred. What is Wagyu? It's, it's Japanese. Like, uh, I guess the cows are. It sounds like a like panda get a dragon. pedicure, massage. <laughs> not, you know, uh, you know, deep tissue. Nice. Uh, they're, they're very, you know, they're very pampered cows in Japan. I think. Wagu, wagu, oh no, Wagu is Texan. I, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking Kobe. Kobe. Kobe is the one. Okay, I so of. so it's the Texas. Wagu is from Texas, I guess, okay. and it's of a, a high caliber as well okay. maybe a, a step below the uh, kobe okay but wagyu's up there now clearly was, was clearly. it the wagyu you had or did you have kobe it was wagyu oh, it was wagyu it was wagyu so kobe would have been even more expensive than 300 probably Jeez. probably the only thing i know about kobe is it's like apparently the marbling of fat on it so opposed to having right. like a rind on the edge of the steak like kobe's got so much fat that it blends into the fibers of the meat and everything like that and i've had both i've had both really uh, but uh like not on my, not on my or? dime. Not on my. I've had Wagyu and Kobe. Not on my dime. Okay, but this and I didn't realize because it was not on my dime. I didn't realize what I was getting involved. In. Right. I almost wish like you know it's nice when those things happen, but it almost sets you up to go like oh I gotta go back to the regular stuff afterwards. By the way, it was delicious. I gotta tell you. I mean, they go. Was it worth three hundred dollars? Was it? Well, no, because. Uh, it's it's money in the garbage. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. So, but uh, it was delicious. Don't get me wrong. So, uh, just I wouldn't pay three hundred dollars for a steak. Yeah, I couldn't. I something couldn't that's just so short term and ephemeral. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, and, and I've tried like it's for me with wines. I've tried you know reasonably expensive bottles. Once you get up to a hundred, two hundred dollars, that's reasonably expensive for a bottle of wine to me. And I've tried those, and I got to be honest, I haven't seen big, big differences. There isn't, you know. It's Usually, it's not. Yeah, and same with whiskey too. I've had, you know, a, a shot of whiskey from a two hundred dollar yeah. bottle, and a little bit better. But you know, the the thirty dollar bottle wasn't bad. You know what I mean? It's not. It's certainly not a, you know, two thousand percent difference in terms of. Anyways, but. I'd be interested to hear about your experience when you have your first cauliflower Kobe steak. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, interesting how they do that. But uh, I mean, obviously, you've proven right to the gates that you're a funny guy. Um, so, of all my guests, I usually ask the questions like originally, you know, where are you from and how did you get started with stand up comedy? Well, I was born in Jersey, raised in mostly in Brooklyn. I went to law school. Really? And during my second year of law school, I started doing comedy at night. And I would go to the Boston Comedy Club in the village. And uh, uh, as a beginner, baby, and I would go in between Dave Chappelle, David Tell, and Jim Norton was like two months ahead of me, whatever. Really? Months, yeah. So all those, all the, Tony Woods, all, all those guys were uh, performing in the Boston Comedy Club in New York. So it was, you know, you had the, you had the best and, and it, so it was a blessing and a curse starting out in that type of situation. Well, it's like a gym with like the heaviest weights. Right. It's you know, like the, the best of the best is there and you're starting out, you know, with, you know, so, so it's, it's, it's good and bad. Yeah. I mean, well, that's like, yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, again, you're, you're talking about, like you said, the best of the best. So when you're competing, even for for just little open mic spots and stuff like that there's going to be monsters that are coming out monsters. and just like we need that spot or whatever and then you got to you have to follow acts like that right was it a long time before like do you remember your first set my first set was in Caroline's on Broadway wow wow and uh, when you were in law school yeah and i invited all my law school friends okay and i killed but uh, let's not get excited mm. yet, quite yet i killed so clearly, I thought, my God, I am such a natural. I, this is how it's going. <laughs> this is how it's, wow, right up my first set. I'm amazing. I'm incredible. And then I realized that when my friends weren't in the audience, and then I got paid work off because I had a tape of me killing in front of a packed room. And then I'm performing in front of like a mob guys in some bar. I was booked, and they threatened to, uh, you know, Destroy take care my, of you. Take care of me. <laughs> get off the stage, you know, with their track suits and uh, <laughs> uh, threatening to burn down my house. Um, and I realized the equation, the logarithms, you take away my friends, <laughs> um, it could be silence of the lamps. Right. Just right. There, get yeah, off the yeah, stage. yeah, 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 yeah. So, get a man. so my first time was amazing. And, uh, and that's what got me hooked. Right. There's a, I've, yeah, I've heard stories. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in the podcast before, but I've heard stories of a lot of great comics just being interviewed other times, talking about their first time going well, but then the next several not going well and just going, wow, like it's a good thing that first one went well because if my first experience had been like the other ones, I may have never continued. I may have just gone, oh, I don't like this, and, and that's it. Yeah, it's what we, what we call the, uh, at least here in auto, we call it this, the safety blanket. A lot of guys, I run the amateur show, so you see a lot of people that they bring out, like all their friends, and we say, okay, well, they've, they've got the safety blanket here, the first one, or birthday party or whatever you call it. So that's very, uh, but it's, it's helpful. I mean, how long, do you know how long it was before you started getting, like you said, I mean, you had that tape, so you probably got to start getting paid stuff regularly, but I guess after that initial wave, like, do you know how long it was before you started to do weekends, do paid stuff? Well, uh, probably five years in yeah. where it was consistent, right. where I started getting paid five years. I mean, like we were on the weekends. That, I mean, in New York City, you could uh, stay in New York. You stay in the week during New York and then you, get, you go to Pennsylvania. You go to try, doing the road is a little different than doing the road that I'm doing now. Right. Of course. So uh, going to Connecticut, you're within the tri-state area. So uh, and that's what I was doing. So it was like. You know, five yeah, five years in about on a consistent level, weekly. Well, that's good. I mean, that's for a lot of guys, it's much, much longer. You know what I mean? So five years in, especially. Mm -hmm. And again, with with the monsters around, like, there's a well, lot of the thing is, like, I had an attitude that a lot of the newer comics don't have now. I would drive a headliner to Virginia. Yeah, I would <laughs> which, in context is a lot of hours right between Virginia and New York. And I would do that, and I would shut my mouth. I would do, uh, you know, I'd get gas, I'd get gas, and I, whatever shekels that they would give me, I'd shut my mouth and do it because I'm breaking in. I'm, I'm breaking in with club owners and learning from the uh, mentors. Right. And, um, I mean, if I had the attitude that some have, um, then I guess you just could just do YouTube videos at home. 
Yeah, and get, I actually get better results. <laughs> so maybe I should stand corrected. Actually, I just I'm realizing this as I'm talking, as I'm reprimanding, I'm the one that should be reprimanded. That's right. They're sitting at home right. doing what we're doing right now. They're just talking to a microphone right. at a table. So no, I, I apologize. I retract <laughs> my statement. I don't, clearly I was wrong. <laughs> That's great. Was there any like, uh, was there any comics that maybe you know were were mentors or took you under their, your wing earlier? Was there any milestones that you can remember early on? Some things that happened. Well, definitely. I uh, there were elderly. I mean, the elder states were not elderly, but the right, elder right. states definitely that uh, uh, took me under their wing. And I would absolutely. I've always had that. You know. Now I don't. You know. But um, uh, yeah, when that was that was pivotal. You know, uh, having. Uh, asking uh, advice what to do and what do you do in this situation it's, it's, it's like it's like you know there's nothing wrong with being coached you know yeah no absolutely and it's a, it's a great attitude to have i have said before too that you know when i was new being around the guys who are where you want to be as opposed to you know your peers who are telling you what it takes to make it kind of thing yeah and uh and as i said like was there any any big events that that happened and not necessarily like gigs but do you remember any any like i said i call them milestones but just any big awards or accolades early on? Any any things that happened, turning points that you can remember early on? I mean, obviously you're you're with all of the the wins of the Boston and Seattle comedy competition, but anything early on that you can remember? Well, I mean, uh, I uh, I wouldn't know off the top of my head too. For the record, I've said this stuff right, right, right. But just sometimes people are like I know exactly when I started to feel because. We have those moments of doubts. It's up and down. You get to that point where you're getting paid, and then it's, all right, what am I doing? Well, what happened for me was, uh, I guess the milestone was happened when I crashed the Montreal Festival. Okay. In 90, I forgot when. It was before, it was maybe 2000, or I, I just, I, I crashed it. I got an agent out of it. Okay. I got really? a big what, agent from what Gersh. What does that mean? You cr- I mean, I know it. I just showed me. up. I showed up. I, I had passes. Okay. And then I, I, I got a guest spot at uh, Jimbo's room. When Jimbo's room, yep. he didn't like me. <laughs> I did get booked by him, but he didn't like he didn't like me at the time because I'm very committed to whatever I do. Yeah. It's I play for keeps. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so. I got I got I got an agent. I moved to LA right after. I, I was not part of the festival. Right. No, that's a, it was just me talking. And then I moved to LA and I got uh courted by like seven different managers. And then my career took <laughs> on. I went to LA and that's then, then then began the journey. That's awesome. And just from I I was not invited to Montreal. There was nothing like that. It's just me schmoozing. Okay. Have you been invited since? No. No, okay. absolutely not. <laughs> See, so you don't But uh, I'm not crying. No, absolutely. God no. God no. Well, there's that's the thing is here in Canada that that festival is like the to some comics it's like the be all and end all. You know, it's like oh, once you get just for laughs, that means you've made it, and it's like no, no. no. <laughs> and that's like even for myself, I've I've showcased many times, and I've had what you know other people on the show, other people in the audience have said has been a great set for the evening, but I've never been asked, mm-hmm. never been asked to the festival, and guys who who I saw them do their first time on my Monday show have since done the festival. So it's one of those things for me, it's like that that great white buffalo or whatever it is, but it really is not the the be all and end all. No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it used to be. You right. Know? Uh, now what's happening is a lot of the industry, uh, they're sending their, uh, you know, their uh, their interns mm. instead, you know? Some, or some make it a vacation, but it's not the uh, the seriousness that it was. You could, uh, you, you, I mean, you can make a break, you, you, you know, start your right off the bat, you know. Yeah, now it's, 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 it's all good. Everything you do is good, Every, you know, but it, there's no silver bullet. No, no. In fact, and it's funny to see, like, over the years, just just, just watching myself as, as someone see how TV goes. Like, you see these shows like, uh, you know, America's Got Talent and American Idol, where, like, people used to have to go and, and you know, sing and work hard and try to get in front of people's showcase, and then, you know, they'd, they'd take a chance on somebody. I go, I see these shows now where I'm like, people are competing. I go, this is brilliant. They're basically getting America to say who they're going to buy an album from before they even have to pay them to be on their, their label or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Same thing with Last Comic Standing and, and everything else. It's, it's going, okay, well, will you guys compete for free? And then once we know everyone likes you, now we know it's a sure thing that if we do an album or something with you that it's going to sell. You know, I don't know, just, I find that stuff uh, fascinating. No, no big uh, development deals or anything like that anymore coming from festivals or, or things like that. It's... 
Yeah, maybe there's a holding deal here or there, but the holding means there just doesn't mean anything. Right. You're just getting some cash. Well, and and YouTube now, like we joked about before, right. it's just you yeah. can you can be famous for with absolutely no representation. It's right. just something you do interest right. people. Mm-hmm. You know? So it is becoming more and more in the performer's hands to get yes. yourself out there. You don't need, you know, everything to come from being seen on that one moment or what have you. Um well that's that's cool. Um I love that. I never heard that story that you just crashed the Montreal Festival. It's mm-hmm. hysterical. Um, the Boston and Seattle comedy competitions. Mm-hmm. When did you do those? Boston was two th- 2007 and okay. then uh, 2008 was Seattle. That's awesome. And I, I, I'm aware of those competitions. I'm not sure what the format's like. Do you mind telling me about, about the competitions or well, how it went? Yeah. Uh, so Boston is a do or die situation. Um, within one week, you're, ge- you're getting the results. Uh, there's you, you, there's different heats, and so there's preliminary rounds, and then uh, from each preliminary round, the top whatever uh, top I, I forgot whatever uh, advance towards the semi, and there's different heats in the semifinals, and then you have the last ten, the remaining ten, and usually there's like a hundred or plus comedians from all over the world competing in this, and. Uh, that was amazing because I never win anything. Right. And the irony in that is that I almost turned back and not and not and and, and this almost turned around and quit really? before I even just say, "Hey, I can't make it." Really? Why? Yeah. Uh, now before the competition before, started. Before the competition, I was okay. I, I flew there, actually New Jersey, and I had problems with the rental car. They were going to charge me more money than it was agreed to. So my money wasn't flowing like like it, like 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 I wanted to at that time, and it was raining, and I had to pay toll. Like my friends are saying, turn around. You never. You, they're not going to get you. Right. No one gets you. Uh, turn around, and stay in New York. Don't even waste your time with this. You got to pay for a hotel. You know, you got to. It's all out of your money. Your hotels right. and, and the hopes eating, that you might make it. And to even uh, whatever you may not. You know, so. Uh, I, uh, one of my best friend's girl, uh, one of my, my best friend's wife told me, pull over and listen to what your heart says. You know, yeah. as I was midway between New York and Boston, I pulled over and then I, I, cont- I was about to drive and I called her up. She says, what have you decided? To- what did your heart tell you? I said, nothing. And then I just moved on anyway. I just screwed <laughs> whatever. Really, <laughs> it said nothing to me. Yeah, I don't. I, yes, yeah, I, I would have no idea what that voice would would tell me. Yeah. because we all know that situation is like, ah, is it worth it? Is that even to just sit down and write? Sometimes mm-hmm. is like that whole. But you know, what am I going to get out of this? Is it even going to be any? So what was interesting was the first round was uh, sparsely attended. You know, big room, mm-hmm. big room. It was a, a comedy club in uh, Nathaniel Hall, I think, and. Uh, the, and the audience was honor, ornery. And it was on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night. She's not a high, excited uh, audience. And what I did was I saw what was happening because people are trying to come out hard. So I just took what the defense gave me. Right. I played small ball. I took the doubles. I took the single. I, 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 I didn't try to hit anything. Just get the, you know, get the patter. Right. Get it going. I played small ball and... My name was called, you know, one of the two to advance to the next round, you know, okay. which was incredible because it was, a, a, but it was an even, even playing field. Everyone had it rough. Right. You know, it wasn't pretty. So it wasn't like people were, were killing. No one was killing. Right. It was just a, it was a battle of attrition. Yeah. I've seen those shows too, where it's just, no one did well. These people did a little bit better or, or took it on the chin a little better or something Right, like that. right. So I've it's how that. you took it on the chin. Yeah. How did you respond to the silence? Yeah. You know, so that was an interesting... And then the, 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 the preliminary and uh, finals were off the hook, but, but that was, the preliminary was rough. The, the, the preliminary round is the worst round. Right. Because anyone, that's anyone's game. Yeah. Uh, amateurs could be professionals, and I've seen it happen. Oh, absolutely. In five minutes, anything can, it's anyone's ball. Yeah. And does it get longer sets as the competition goes on? Yeah, incrementally. I think uh, 
Yeah, so the semifinals probably was like maybe seven, eight minutes, and then maybe in the finals was ten minutes. You okay, know? okay. So it's not like, but you weren't you weren't going up for you know, 15, 20. Or no, no, like no, 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 no. That's now we're talking Seattle. Now we're talking a different okay. Turkey. Okay. Well, you won Boston. Were yeah. You, were you blown away? That, that was a, uh, yeah. And then I got management f- from that, and I got another big agent from that. <laughs> it was great. It was it was uh, it was one of my. It was definitely one of my happiest moments. Uh, you know, of spotlight. Right. Well, that's awesome. That's because awesome. and no one and I was underrated. Like, I was overlooked. Like, no one. I would I would listen to the comics talk who they have to watch out for and like you know. And my name was never in the uh, in the, the discussion. Those, those. I was just I, I I was ignored. No, 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 nothing in a bad way. Just no, I no, wasn't uh, I wasn't someone anyone was focusing on. Right, you were just flying under the radar. Yeah. But that's yeah, which is the best. Yeah, the best. <laughs> I I tell I haven't told the story in the podcast yet, but when I was working for my last you know, full-time day job a few years ago working for, for Bell. Uh, you know, I was selling cell phones and, and home internet and things like that. And they were very supportive of my comedy career. You know, like they, in fact, when I would go to Toronto, that's where their head office is. And my regional managers and stuff would invite their bosses to come out and see shows. And like, this guy's on my team. We love him. And they were great until I really started doing good with my sales. You know what I mean? And I was starting to go, well, you know, and eventually they gave me that whole, so what can we do to get you to, to make this priority number one and, and let go of that? And I said, you can't, you know, that was the discussion we had when you first got me. And uh, I was almost like, you know what? I shouldn't, I shouldn't have come out and been a star player. I should have been just like that, that third line guy, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. just all put up whatever regular amount of points I'm supposed to. And that way you won't notice, you won't want me to stay on all the time and, and be... You know, and just an interesting uh, anecdote I want to say is that I never thought I was going to win, even when I advanced. Nor did I care. Really? In a healthy way. Right. I didn't expect anything. I was just in the moment, and I never thought I was going to win. But I'm going to tell you something interesting. This is, this, now we're going to get into the supernatural, Please because do. that's what the llama is all about. But it's true. <laughs> Uh, the, I'm, sta- I'm staying at a friend's house. Uh, my name Justin, who's an incredible com- comedian. He was staying in New Hampshire. Actually, he put me up. Uh, he, I was able to put me up. I didn't have to pay for a hotel, so he was able. I talked to him. He stayed with me, and he just had a, a newborn. You know, so I, I, you know. Anyway, so the night before the finals, and I advanced the semifinals. I'm pinching myself because this is like wow. And by the way, I'm like meditating. I am meditating before I go to bed. I have these like crystal rocks that this mystic told me. To okay. <laughs> I came fully I, armed. Don't yeah, get yeah, yeah. <laughs> So don't let me. I mean, I, I did. I did. I did try to be uh, bring the you know uh, getting become one with my spirituality. Right. I had a dream. I had a dream. So when you pick a lottery, okay, uh, out of a hat to see what, which you go up. On the lineup, and as everyone knows, number one is really sucks. The yeah. bullet spot is death. I mean, I've seen it done. I've seen. I've seen. I mean, when you're really, really good, you could overcome anything. But who wants to have that burden? It's still harder work. It's still hard. It's yeah. not it, it, exactly. Um, generally, the later you go, the uh, you have an advantage. As well, you're freshest you know? in their mind. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when they're reflecting on set, it's hard to remember what that first guy was talking about. Twelve comics later. So anyway, I had a dream that I selected the number six in the lottery. Okay. And I'm having coffee with my friend Justin. I said, Justin, I had a dream that I picked the number six. Justin, if I pick the number six, I'm going to win tonight. And this this, this is a true story. So, and I'm, I'm in, I'm in the dressing room. And they come around with the with the with the with the hat. So you pick out the thing and I I let it come to me. I, I didn't get up to go pick it. I let, the server come to me. I like that. And I got the number six. And I said, oh, my God. And then Justin came late. He missed he missed the event because he was driving from New Hampshire. He asked the clerk at the ticket booth, could you at least tell me, you know, the show's over. Could you at least tell me what what number time okay, it came in? Okay, he wasn't on the show. I no. was worried that he came and he had to draw a lot. They put no, him no, he it. wasn't on the show. He was just a fellow comic just, putting me up. Gotcha. He came. He wanted to see the show. He came late. He goes, just tell me what number Tommy selected. He said six. And he goes, I knew, then I, I knew you won. Wow. Yeah. That's great. This is, I, I'm just going to tell you just, just funny. This is where I thought the story was going. Because when you're like, he showed up late. And I thought he was on the show as well. Right. And that because he was late, they gave him one. But you were like, 
already drew six. I know I'm going to win. I'll take first spot. And that you you won in first because you had drawn the six, so you knew you were winning. Right, Anyways, right, right, right. That's the you tell that story next time. Uh, right, that's a better story. <laughs> that's a better story. It's a better I drew story. Six, so I knew I was winning. Didn't matter where. Right, especially since you had talked about drawing bullet. It'd been so right, bad. Right, I thought, right. I really, really thought. I'm just telling you, if we Hollywoodify this. That's yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah. That's the yeah, edit yeah. that they would make. We could re-edit record. this after. <laughs> but that's still outstanding. I mean, just the idea that you're like, I had a dream. This is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine that even just drawing six. The, the amount of confidence that that's got to give, right? Like a lot of those fears and, and, and being anxious and before the competition. Yes. That you got to go like, that's just got to sort of rinse off a good portion yes, of that. Yes, it go does. On, I it got does. That. And it was, um, I still didn't think, I, I, I just felt, I felt good. Put it that way. And I didn't have fear and I didn't have nervousness. I was calm and uh, it was just, everything was moving slow. Well, that's great. And of course, you moved on in Seattle. You won that competition yes. as well. Is that a longer competition? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a three-week wow. undertaking. Uh, at your own cost as well. At your own cost, unless you have friends to stay at. Right. And a lot of traveling. They should call it everywhere but the Seattle comedy competition <laughs> because it's everywhere but Seattle. Wow. You know, it's, every, it's not, maybe there's one room in Seattle, but you wind up in San Francisco, Portland, you wind up in the, Chico, California, but it's the Seattle comedy competition. Wow. Don't worry. <laughs> that's just sort of where they book it from. That's <laughs> what, <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. That's where they call that it. That is correct. Yeah. Exactly. We can't call it the, uh, the, the Portland, uh, no, 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 no. Right, right. <laughs> Chico. <laughs> right, right. So it's in, uh, yeah. So Idaho. So anyway. So it's three weeks uh, of competition, and you're up like every night, like real, uh, like six, seven nights a week. And it's wow. hard. It's it's exhausting. How like with that many shows, like six nights, three weeks? Yeah. Can you can you lose a night, or are you just yes, every yes, single, you could okay. lose. You definitely could lose. No, it's it's cumulative. It's okay. like what Jason does here at the Absolute Comedy Club. Okay. It's like that. It's, it's not just, a win and in or it's, or, just, or... it's just more tortuous. Okay, wow. That's all. Wow. So think of that. Think of, It's a month-long competition, just like what Jason does, except you're in it for the whole month. You're in it for the whole month. Yeah, right. It's not, it's it's not, not, different. not waiting for the other If you advance. So, right. Oh, my it's God. It's nonstop. And that's hard to book for, too, because if you're... If you're trying to make, you know, book hotels or something like that and, and go, well, I, I don't even know if I'm going to move forward after, you know, three, four Yeah, you, you eat money. Yeah, you, you're out. You're out. Yeah, you're gambling on yourself. Do they, what, do you mind if I ask, what is the grand prize for winning Seattle? I mean, obviously the, the credit is a great one to have, but. Okay. Um, trying to think. Uh, I know it was okay. I'm not going to say that I made five. It wasn't more than five grand. Okay. If it, but it it, it could have been five grand. That I don't remember. Right. Right. I don't remember if the five grand was divvied, or I got the five grand. I don't. But remember. But that's sort of what the advertised grand prize is. Right. right. Maybe advertised as ten thousand dollars grand prize. Right. Tax. I, I didn't tax. get more. Put it. I didn't get more than five grand. Right. Okay. Now what happened winning that one? And by the way, like that one uh, came down to the last. By the way. That came down to the last night. I had and I, I had to come in first, in order for me to win this whole thing out. Oh on wow! The last night because I had an early lead. Because now I was the, I was I was the uh, I was I was the one everyone was talking about. Now the, my, my my winner of last year's winner of last comedy. week's what? So now you're now you got a target. <laughs> now, now it's different. <laughs> and I like being the Boston guy without the target than with the target. You know so. The, I wanted to, uh, what am I going to say? I'm blanking out here. Um, yeah, no maybe worries. it's because I need more summer speak. Oh, is that? <laughs> I mean, that's doing? the problem. Hey, no, we're both, all out. We're, we're all out of summer. Good. Oh, good. Thank there God. You go. Thank God. That sweet, sweet, that uh, the fuel to stay cool, I call it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. We're what drinking was red rhubarb, by the yeah, way. Yeah, delicious. Guys. New flavor this year. <laughs> it's not bad. I always try to give them a little sound, clink the ice cubes in the glass. Mm. So here's it, here's it again. I, I had oh yeah I had an early le- I was I was uh, I, I was the problem was I was feared and you don't want you don't want people not to think about you right you don't want people to come after you so I I, I had an early lead but I, then I had some bad bad you know I got some number ones I, I had a number one slot that I didn't I came in maybe fourth or last in that one the finals so and it came I got so. Uh, I lost my lead. Okay. 
The only way mathematically I could win this whole thing now was to come in first place on the last night. That's oh, the only wow. way. There was no other mathematical yeah, do alternative. Or, do or die. All do, I have to come in number one now. Yeah. So I meditated. I, I'm not joking. <laughs> I believe you. I'm not I joking. I meditated. I, I envisioned myself on fire. Like fire, light was coming from me. And then I took that attitude with me to the competition. I looked at my opponent's eyes. And this is unlike me. Uh, the, unlike in Boston where I'm just silking around nonchalant. Real, you know, here I'm looking, with, I'm looking in their eyes. Good luck. But letting, wow. And look in my eyes. I'm winning this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I w I'm winning this thing. Gotta believe with it. the Boston thing, I wasn't like that. It was like... What was me? What happens, happens. Right. And this one was... But you were owning it. Like, you, I'm, just, you I'm, couldn't believe anything else because... No, it took, I'm yeah. taking this. You're not... No one's... And, and, and it actually, there was an article written. Savitt had a determination in his eyes that he was not going to be denied. Wow. And they, I wasn't. And he didn't... He, I, laid, I laid it down. Well, everything, everything I understand about the the spirituality and the believing is that yeah, if you if you convince and don't you don't let any other other thoughts creep in. Yeah, you believe with your heart. I'm gonna, and it's almost impossible for the universe to get in your way when you right. when you look at it that way. That's that's awesome. That's a great story. Yeah, I'm winning this one, and I like the confidence too. You're like I meditated. Last one, eh, you know, I drew the six. Hey, yeah, I, had, that, I had outside help. I had divine help. This one was me. Well, that's great, and then, of course. And I, I, uh, I remember uh, when I first started stand up. It's like eight, nine years ago now. I was listening uh, to AOL Radio, mm -hmm. and and I'd heard you on there. I, I hadn't heard of you before because we don't get a lot of the American stand up here. But I heard you on AOL Radio a lot of your different bits, and I thought you were you were absolutely hysterical. Like I just it only this used to play in the background while I'd be doing other work. Okay, or playing video games doesn't really matter. But occasionally, someone would come on, and I'd go, well, "Okay, like I go, I've heard this guy come. I gotta know who it is now. You know what I mean?" And I'd pull it up, and I'd see Tommy Savitt. And uh, I don't want to quote any of your jokes, but it was I remember just the only one I can remember the bit that you were doing was the "I would never do that" mm -hmm. bit, which is outstanding. Find it on an album, guys. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cheat him out of it. You you got to find it yourself and enjoy it. But it's absolutely hysterical. Um, but I remember hearing those, and, I, and you were one of like I mean maybe three or four comics who had actually if I didn't know them already you're you're Atels and and mm -hmm. Carlins and Priors and things like that yeah I heard the voice I knew who it was immediately but there was a few guys yourself uh, I think Gary Gullman mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Fatel uh, just a few just unique voices that I was like I'd never heard of them I'm like out, outstanding Brian Regan I knew but I got to enjoy more of his stuff from from the AOL but anyways you I had heard you originally there. But that was that was before the, that you have uh, evolved into the Tommy Lama. I could yeah. be mistaken about the timeline, but at least what I was hearing then and what I knew That's of you pre -Lama. then was pre-Lama. So can you can you take me into the Lama? Like you're developing spiritually. So what happened was um, I'm doing my the act that has won these uh, uh, competitions, and then, and by the way, when I when I won Seattle. I didn't leave Seattle for like three months because I got so much work after that. And um, my, yeah, so I was working a lot and everything. And then uh, I was talking to this club owner in Florida and he said, you know, it would be interesting if you brought in the self-help aspect into what you're doing and see what happens. And the reason he said that, because we were doing a radio interview and I was kind of unintentionally giving relationship advice and like a Dr. Phil type of thing. And then he saw something in that, in that, in that uh, dialogue I had with the people, the listeners calling in and he said he saw something there and I started playing with it. And then, you know, look, look what I'm doing anyway. I'm, I have, I have crystal rocks in my hands anyway. I, I'm meditating. So it was, uh, you know, uh, a natural course for me to take. Now, uh, you know, what I find is I've gained new fans different. I may have lost some fans that have liked what I used to do. Really? Because this is different. This is a different, you know, it's, one was like uh, uh, relationships and this right. is more uh, worldly. Right, right. So, 
you know, the typical truck driver wants to go, you know, who wants me now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is more, uh, you know, on a spiritual quest that ends ends up nowhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that ends up nowhere. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen your act. It's outstanding. Like um, like some females did not like my other act. because You know, basically with my older act, I would do the id of the male in the locker room, the way they talk. Uh, but it was still making fun of the, it was making fun of me. Uh, it was it was never, um, uh, it was never meant to be offensive anyway. But anyway, and this, uh, so the act I'm currently doing attracts more women. than So it's just, it's just, it's just interesting. And it's great. Like my my brother and I both, uh, you know, I don't want to say that we're spiritual, but definitely uh, really interested and 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 curious and uh, intrigued by by the Eastern sort of philosophies and things like that. A lot of meditation, a lot of self of spirituality, things like that. So uh, my brother was like, "Dude, have you seen Tommy's act?" And I was saying, I, "This was years ago, of course." But he's like, "Have you seen Tom, what Tommy's doing now?" And I said, "No." He goes, "Dude, it's." It's unbelievable. And and I saw it and I was like, this is probably one of the most unique, hysterical, creative things that, that I've seen. Um, so again, I want to encourage anyone who's listening to obviously don't miss your opportunity to see. Uh, to see. You already missed it in Kings and Toronto. Sorry, listeners in those areas. You missed it. Pay attention next time. <laughs> but uh, but Ottawa still has a chance to see you. Um, do you have a process for, for writing, you know, um, I mean, it's it's hard. Like, I don't even mean just, mean just generally in writing, but do you have a process as the, you know? Well, it depends on the goal I have. Okay. Uh, like, for instance, this week, I'm trying to get a recording. Okay. So it's a matter of me honing and improving the weak spots that I have because I'm trying to get my Tommy Lama CD out there. So... But maybe there's a topic I want to talk, or or expanding on, to, like I talk about chakras, right? So you know, and it's about expanding, you know, the th- your your throat. Ch- maybe I want to talk about your throat chakra, and then your solar plexus chakra. So we're doing chakra chat right now. So we're trying to build the chakra bits, right? You know, so because um, it's not like me and observations of what's going. You know, this is different. This is connecting to people that you know whether it's how to achieve financial you know financial abundance uh speaking to the dead uh feng shui uh, um you know uh, i am a hodgepodge of all that and it's apparent and it's a spoof on because let's face it, everyone is spirit you're human you're spiritual there's no such thing i'm spiritual everyone is born spiritual right no, that thing's you know so it's just a matter of awareness. That's all. Uh, but, you know, and uh, what happens is, but a lot of people who call themselves spirituals are hypocrites. Right. You know, because the, uh, when you don't, when you take yourself too seriously and you can't laugh at yourself, uh, you become righteous, then you miss the whole boat. Right. You know, so I'm having fun with the genre. <laughs> I love that. I love that. No, I, I like I said, I've, I've and I'm educating. Been... I'm educating people. What the hell's a chakra? Don't get. I get a lot of glazed looks, but right. the, the point is, I am in a way through spoof. Uh, I, I, they call it a spoof. I would never label. It. I'm very serious when I teach, but you know they call it a spoof because you got to market it somehow. <laughs> but <laughs> I was smiling the whole time he was saying that, and he didn't break. Then I can't. Yeah, I couldn't hold it. <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah, I mean, everything I've heard, the the, the chakras, but you are creating a, an awareness, like you said, in all honesty. I mean, people are like, yeah, I've sort of heard about this. And, uh, and and I would imagine, I would imagine that there's some people who don't get it. Like they think there's absolutely. a certain level of seriousness. Absolutely, whatever. absolutely. And, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm the only comic that, you know, you could kill. I'm not a comedian. I'm a spiritualist on stage. I, once again, I'm labeling myself just for marketing purposes for the secular. But I, you know, it never fails, and I, I'm not alone. You could you could kill. You could have a great reaction, and there are people that look at you and hate your guts, right? Even though you're trying to help them, <laughs> it's just bite the hand that feeds them. It's a seminar they, that's free. Yeah, or, uh, you know, open mind. Yeah, and they just don't. Uh, and, and this is true um, when it comes to, well, because I'm branding myself, when it comes to satire or parody, this is true, and I've read this, 
there are people that lack the, and they could be accountants, intelligent people. You don't have to be a dummy, but they lack the cognitive, they never developed cognitively that if you're saying something, it has to be true. Right. And they can't, they don't understand tongue in cheek. Right. And, um, and then otherwise intelligent people. You just don't, and just didn't develop it. Have you had any uh, like interesting confrontations? Not necessarily aggressive, but just someone you know, like sure. maybe people who are trying to correct <laughs> or something. Right, anything right, along. Right. Uh, so, right. So, what will happen is the two groups that I would get that would not care for what I do <laughs> 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 would not care would be the self righteous. Right. I'm. Uh, I'm. I would be a blasphemer. You know, I would be, I hate, like, uh, you know, they take their some so seriously, how dare I mock, which I'm not doing, but in their eyes, it's tre right. treason, and I should be killed. <laughs> uh, and then you got the other block that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, and <laughs> I came here for a comedy show. <laughs> I, I didn't come I, uh, <laughs> for a self-help <laughs> spiritual <laughs> revival. Right. Right. right, it's a it's a, a spiritual timeshare that they didn't remember signing their email. Up for. Right, 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 right. What the hell did we just get into? Yeah, right. when is the comedy show? Start? Right, when is the com <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> Anybody who wins free tickets would probably think that. Oh, that's how they get you. We got free tickets. Then the show starts after well, this. You know, when you, when you get free tickets, anyway, it's just a general. Whether you're a spiritual teacher on stage or a comedian. They have uh, not much vested into the show, so they don't respect the show. I, they tend not to respect the show, and they don't give you... They're not coming with the same energy as someone that pays and wants to have a good time. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you so, have no investment, then... When free people come in for free and they're not too happy, well, you got what you paid for. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> I love... Yeah, like I said, I mean, I can't... Uh, I don't want to just fanboy about it, but I, I love I love the act. I love what you're talking about. I love hearing the new, you know, the new guidances that you bring to the stage, right? The, the And meditations. it's an interactive show. It's, an, it's a revival. It's, it's uh, you know, it's... Uh, you know, and then, you know, like I'll get... Some people don't think it's stand-up comedy. Yes, it is. If you go back to the roots, uh, yes, it is. You know, because it's not what's being done now, but it is. It's uh, the setup punch. It's all that. Even in the even in the uh, even in the interaction part, it's all setup punch. So it is. It's just deceptive. Well, and it's and that's the thing is I think that some of the hardest thing to like that's. In my jokes, it's how do I bury the punchline and not let right. you see it coming? Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea that that you know you're you're calm, you're you're doing this 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 guided group meditation or, or you know enlightenment, and that they can't see it coming. They go, well, where's the? It's like, yeah, but you've been laughing this whole time. You know what I mean? You just I just did a great job of not showing you how it's done. You go to the movies and you're laughing at monsters crashing into buildings. Well, none of that's real, right? right? You know, it's all something you just you just didn't see how it was made. But you still laughed the whole time. You still enjoyed it. Um, no, I think it's I think it's outstanding. Um, now you you have the Tommy Lama as a staple in Vegas now. Well, I'm done. I, I, oh, I, I did three months at the Tropicana. I did six months um, at the Stratosphere, and uh, and I just began touring. So like the Absolute Comedy Club is like fresh off my. I did Florida for three weeks, and then now I, I did the embarkation and, uh, for the Absolute Comedy Clubs. Well, that's, I mean, we're, so, we're happy to have you back, obviously. Yeah. Now, do you mind if I ask, what was that like having your own show in Las Vegas in a casino? Like, that's another thing as a performer. That's kind of like one of Yeah, those it's things. a dream. It's yeah. a dream. It's a dream come true. And uh, now that I had it, I have other dreams now. Right. You know? Yeah. That's it's, uh, you know, I love, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love Vegas. But I got to tell you, there's something about having mobility. And not being in one place every night, I got to tell you, yeah, I kind of like that freedom. Right. Well, I was going to ask, and it's only if you don't mind talking about it, is what is that like where, you know, you go after the show as a comic, right? You'd club to club or different theaters or whatever. Yeah. What's it like when the sh they're, they're always coming to you in the same place? Is the yeah, I mean, you can't do, I mean, the drug, I, it's a, don't get me wrong. I, I do it again in a heartbeat. Um and it was a great experience. It made me a better performer. Made me a showman. It made me because you're in freaking Vegas, so but you can't go anywhere. 
Mm. You where are you gonna go? Like 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 I was off like two nights and you can't uh, you can't take a vacation, right? Because you I mean you could drive to Arizona for a day if you want and come back, but you, you it's 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 nine to it becomes now it's nine to five in right. a way because whatever you do it's structured around your time slot, right? So you got to be back and you got to prepare, set up your stage and all, whatever else you need to be, talk to the sound guy, get everything right, you know. Yeah, and it becomes that And, and promote and promote and it's, it's, it's actually a full-time job. It's 24 hours. Right. It's meetings, red carpets, it's schmoozing, it's, it's all that. It's, 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 it's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's what it sounds like. So here, like when I come here, you know, I'm watching Netflix. Right, you do. Get it's to- a little different. <laughs> I'm not. There's no. Pre- it doesn't. I, 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 I. You know. I'll walk in five to five to eight p.m. Order my chicken wings, and then I have a few slurps, and right. then I'm do a uh, podcast, and then right? walk. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a podcast. Have some drinks. It's a different, 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 uh, different modality. Right. Yeah. No, and it's understandable. And that's the thing is, I, I always like to ask those questions just because. People do have that intro. Oh, you just, you just, you go sit and you put your feet up in your robe all day and then you come down and you do your show and then that's the end of it. It's like, well, no, there's a lot of stuff and it's, it's limiting, you know, yeah. there is a, there is a bit of a, I still enjoy it. I mean, I'm, I'm still relatively new to stand up, but I still enjoy being able to go on the road and go, I'm not going to be home this week. I don't have to do stuff, at least not in the same thing. I can pull up my laptop and do a little bit of work, but in terms of being like, okay, I got to be here and then I got to go over there and oh, well, I may as well get this done while I'm, it just, it adds up quick. And yeah, if you're stuck in the same place, you are stuck in the same place. It's kind of one of the things that we didn't like about having the day job before we started stand up. Yes, except yeah. that you're doing what you love, right. which helps, but you're still in the static position. Right, and I think there's something about comics that we need to sort of be moving a little bit. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, because just you need stimuli. Yeah, absolutely. And Vegas is stimuli, but and Vegas is the ultimate stimuli. But as you live in some place, it it doesn't have the same. It, you get immune to it. Absolutely. Anything. Anything. Okay. I I heard this just talking about all the self help stuff and whatnot. But I'll I'll share with who better than the, of share the with master, the llama, right? Is uh, I uh, there was a, a talk that I was listening to about scarcity and abundance, and they were talking about. Are you, are you familiar with? This? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you know what I'm going to say. But for anyone who's listening, I'll try to abbreviate it. Um, it's just anything is is fascinating and exciting to you when it's scarce, um, you know. But as soon as something's around all the time, there's an abundance of it, right? If you have a ton of something in your cabinets, you know, you don't really care. But if it's the last one, you you want it. That's that scarcity. It even uh, you know happens in relationships, right? As you know, you you're married, you have, you have years together, right? And you come home every day, you know, it's, it's this person's always there. We take them for granted or whatever. But the idea is that there's an abundance, and then all of a sudden there's a new guy at work. And, you know, she's talking about him. Well, now the interest isn't, you know, you anymore. It's this other person. Now, now that focus and that, that becomes scarce again. And that's where the interest comes back. So we're, I, I think that as comics, we have this insatiable curiosity as well. We always mm-hmm. want to be learning new things. And of course, yeah, like I said, even Vegas where there's tons of stimulus, but if there's an abundance of that stimulus, then it's just, you know, who cares? I can't, I can see it any day I want. I'm going to just stay home or whatever. So and it's 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 fascinating. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't matter where you are. You just you got to keep keep it moving, keep it moving. Yeah. Um, is there anything? Um, let me see. I, I already asked you if there was anybody. No, uh, no fascinating. St- I mean, there may not be. But is there any fascinating stories where someone really just didn't didn't get what you were doing and was like, I guess no no confrontation. I would imagine you're, everything you're doing is very kind and open. So I guess there wouldn't be a whole lot. Of, but like you said, those people well, who are like they, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, I've had confrontations uh, in my act where they got angry with my repre- representation on stage, my presentation of myself on stage <laughs> on a literal level. Um, I, uh, one time, uh, like, 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 like one time I'm doing my other act and this girl came up to me and it was in Texas and she goes, you hate women. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, no, I don't. And then she spit on me. Yeah. And then, what? And then ran out. And then ran, out and ran out. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she said that of the llama. That's No, not of the llama. Oh, no, my, okay. Uh, my apologies. Are you asking for the llama? You're no, asking, no, that's, uh, no you, I you still give an example of, 
of my travails. Well, that goes back to what you were saying about the other character. You're like the llama is a lot more accessible to right. women. And there were people, like yeah, right, right. But there are people that uh, will get angry. You know, that, you hate women and it's male. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And that was like a baptism. Yeah, for the llama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then and then she showed me that I needed to change my ways <laughs> and become on the more spiritual path, which led me to what I am now. So That's I'm not getting spit on this so much. <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> um, yeah, so you were saying, I, I had asked you a moment ago, and it is one of the questions that I have here, is, uh, you know, you, you did Vegas. That's a dream. Now you have other dreams. Do you mind if I ask? Is there any other? Any well, other yeah, I, I, you know, um, what I'd like to do is I would like actually to have a Tommy Lama TV show. <laughs> a little I TV show I would for the people. <laughs> <laughs> what or the movie. <laughs> I would like, like, you know, I would like, I would like to get on the screen. That's okay. what I would like now. Do you have a preference to TV or movies? Because there was that love guru, which is not like the llama. Not like the llama. That, Nothing that was, like it. That was awful. Nothing like it. No, so no, get similar, it twisted. no similarities whatsoever. <laughs> no, none at all. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, do I have a preference? Like, you want morning, you want night. Like, when when is it best to receive the llama? Oh, I definitely. Uh, well, the night, nighttime, the nighttime, night, nice <laughs> nighttime llama, llama station, llama station. Yeah. I like the llama and it station. Depends. And I'm not, you know, it doesn't have to be a network. It could be, it could be whatever, uh, a viable medium. Okay, that people could see my teachings. Okay, like you know, like, like the, the streaming services would stre- work. Streaming, yeah, yeah, something. But that was a viable streaming service that that, right. that was successful. Right. So now, you know, not just uh, one that no one listens to. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can we couldn't do a weekly one man lost <laughs> one man podcast lost. Right. That would be fun though. Maybe maybe uh, I'll see about just reaching out to you if you just have little one sentence things. I'll just read them at the end of an episode. Right. Is, right. Right. We ladies and we were lucky this week. We've received another message. That's from the right. Lama. That's right. Um, no, that's that's great, and I, you know what? I I love the character, so I would be a big advocate of that. Um, and so I, I always ask at the end: Is do you have anything coming up? Um, well, I intend to come out with a book. Okay. Um, with my mantras, uh, book of mantra, a toilet read. Okay. What are they? What are they called? A toilet or a call? I get confused because, and I should know my genre. Okay, is it called a? Coffee reader or a toilet reader? Well, they're the two books. different things. The two different books, right? right? Right. Okay. Now, what's the difference between the t- the table re- the coffee coffee table book t- coffee table book and a toilet bathroom read- reader? Yeah, bathroom yeah. reader. What's yeah. the difference? Well, uh, coffee table books do not sponsor this podcast. <laughs> 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 that's different <number> one. <laughs> my friends at portablepress.com um well okay so coffee table book my understanding too because we're gonna get emails and people are gonna go ah, they're gonna correct this both but a coffee table book the idea is it's just something that you know you leave on your coffee table so that if you have guests or whatever someone's sitting around your living room they have something they can just sort of like flip through and look i think if I had to, to quantify it, I would say that the coffee table book is more visual. Lots of big pictures, something that you really, you're not expected to sort of pick up and read. Uh, bathroom reader, uh, and they do have numerous kinds, but, uh, but the actual Uncle John's bathroom readers are you know anywhere from like one to four page pieces of random trivia, readers, fun facts. The idea is to, to kill the time while you're in the bathroom waiting for, for business to happen. So... I have said on this podcast before, the idea for me of, of having a book just sitting in the bathroom, absorbing the humidity and the smells is disgusting to me. So I actually don't read them in the bathroom. I have them and I read them before bed. I read them on the podcast, of course. One uh, Every One Man podcast has a, a an article from one of them. But yeah, the difference, my understanding is it's like a quick read and it is more read. So it's not about the visuals or whatever. It's to, to read and get information. So if for your medium, uh, of having the the mantras and the meditations, I would say the bathroom reader would be more, yeah, right. more, yeah. Because there's books. I've got a meditation book. It's nothing to do with the bathroom, but it's just it's single page mm-hmm. daily mm-hmm. meditation. So yeah, that would be sort of what, what I would say. Very nice. Yeah, coffee table books, unless it's pictures. If you well, did a yoga book or something like that, where you're doing right, no, because I may have pictures. Is what I'm saying with to match the mantras. You could do that. You could still put it in the bathroom, right? If, as okay. long as it was. But if the idea is that you've got a message you're trying to receive, do it the the bathroom reader style. 
because the coffee table books are more like you're talking to someone, but you're flipping, gotcha. looking at pictures of the Eiffel Tower and uh, the Coliseum, but it's not to pick up. And I'll be right back. I got a couple articles I got to read. See, even the llama learned something. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I had a great chat. Is there anything, is there, uh, is there any messages or anything like that that you, that you would want uh, the audience to hear? Not to put you on the spot, but of course you're such no, a, well, who, a wealth of knowledge. I, I will, will, who, What is the majority of your viewers? Are they comedians? Are they? I've got. What do you? What, what would you say they are? I'd say I, to, their essence. Real, oh. Realistically, I think it's people that are looking to connect. Because one of the things I've always promised my audience is that I'm not I'm not editing things out. Just if we have a conversation, it's always going to be real. No bullshit. No whatever. So it's people who are looking to connect. So in this moment, this is your episode. These are people who want to connect with you. Well, I just want to tell everyone, um, follow your dreams. This is being sincere now. Uh, I've, I've accomplished things that I never thought in my life would happen. Uh, from Vegas to winning these competitions and all this stuff. I never thought, and I could have just been a lawyer. And I would have never, had I followed the, ru the route of being a lawyer, and, uh, and which would have been an unsatisfactory, unenjoyable life choice for me. And th th we didn't even get into that part. Did you want to? I was. I oh, meant to ask you when you had said the oh, law. I hated it. I hated. I, I. I am an attorney. I'm licensed in uh, really? New York and Connecticut. What kind of law? I, uh, real estate. Oh, okay. Uh, but I hated it. I just did it. I, I didn't know I could do comedy, and I started doing comedy in my during my second year of law school. Now, how did that start? I'm so sorry to interrupt the story. No problem. But 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 going from like I'm studying law, which which to me seems like I, I feel like that's an impossibility to be able to read a law book and try to retain boring information. I just don't feel like I could do it. My eyes would roll back, man. So how how did you just summon this essence to just start doing comedy? Well, because after my first year of law school, I had such uh, I knew I hated it, and I'm stuck now. I'm in. I did a year. It's money involved. Uh, what am I going to do, quit, you know, which right. I wish I did, but that's something else. I went into, I said, what can I do with this to make this exciting? And comedy was not something I thought I could do. So I went to, I convinced myself to become an officer for the Marines. Okay. So I went, so they had a program where you go for boot camp training for the summer. So I went to Marine, I went to uh, Paris Island. Okay. Where I go, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> I just did a year of law school, and now I'm being yelled at uh, four in the morning to get up. <laughs> I just signed up for this to become an <laughs> officer. And I made the drill instructors laugh. I would use words that was above their pay grade. Right. In my retorts to them. <laughs> in front of other officers? In, in front of, oh, in front of other recruits. And uh, to make a long story short, I uh, was given the option to either they offered me a split summer program they wanted to consolidate it or i could just take a leave of just leave walk away i chose the latter uh with a week and a half to graduate and i was an enlisted man's boot camp but not an officer's boot camp because okay. they gave me a little run around with the administrative and i knew that they were doing that because i was supposed to go to officer boot camp but i figured um i'd get in shape and i would have an edge when I went to officer boot camp. So right. that was my rationale. So they didn't get one over on me is what okay. I'm saying. I knew what they were doing anyway. So I, uh, on my way out, my drill instructor gives me a very famous speech. Cause one day, one unfortunate woman's going to marry you. And while you're watching it on TV, the next great war, your unfortunate wife, is going to bear you a child. And this child's going to look up to you while you're sitting on your couch watching the war. He's going to look in your blue eyes. And you know what you're going to say, Savage? You could have been a Marine. You're a failure. And one more thing, don't be a lawyer. Be a comedian. Wow. And that was it. That was the curse. That was right there, the curse. And then... Uh, I like how his, like, his priority was Marine is better. Yes. But don't... Yeah. Don't be a lawyer, yeah. be a comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. so he throws that even the uh, broken clock is right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So second year of law school, I was doing uh, comedy at night at the Boston Comedy Club in the village of New York City. Cool. That's cool. That Which that's, no longer exists. Right. But that's still cool that like, you know, that's that those hard guys are like, all right, you know, you're you're fucking you're this, but you're funny. Right, right, you know, right, right, right. Funny. Don't waste that. Right. Don't waste that. All right. No, that's that's outstanding. So, like you said, you could have been a lawyer, but you would uh -huh. have been miserable. Uh huh. 
and now and not that I'm not miserable now because <laughs> as a comedian you but you use that misery as a positive right. <laughs> that's a, what keeps you driving that's right. if I was content it would be never a reason to even do this podcast. Well, we're like... A, I, I, no, I, 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 be, I could be watching House of Cards right now. Something productive. I have to watch that. I haven't started watching any of it yet, but I've heard it's outstanding. Um, yeah, I mean, we're like we're like lightning rods for the things. Only we're, we're transformers. We take in the raw stuff, the tragedy, whatever, and we do the burden of processing it into something for, for everyone else. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm always patting us comedians on the back for, for, for what we do. Do you feel that, that that insatiable hunger that's just it's just never good enough? I, I call it the artist. It's never curse. good never good enough. It's never good enough. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it's never good. I don't care what and I know it. I'm never gonna be content. No, but do you feel that there's a, a strength in that? Or at least a, a positive? I wish it was a little less of that, because right. it's annoying. Yeah. That you gotta wake up unsatisfied. Right, you know, but uh, but isn't that what? But that keeps you, you right. It's a, a double edged sword. It's both. Yeah, it, it, I guess you need you need that because yeah. otherwise you wouldn't be motivated to do anything. Well, and that's that's exactly it. I don't know if I've I've mentioned this on the podcast before to the the audience, but that's kind of the way it is for I, I think all artists. It's not just mm -hmm. you know, comedians, but that whole just never being satisfied. You know, and you, you you hit one like milestone or accomplishment or whatever it is, and then you just go. All right, well, that's what next. Okay, yeah, I was all right. And everyone's patting you, but yeah, yeah, but I'd like that. We, this wasn't good enough. And you know, I should have done. And so you just keep moving forward. But I think that's what it is. Because as soon as you go, all right, I'm good. Like, that's that's all I need to, then you're done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's just, that's the beginning of the end. So it's kind of like, nope. All right, what's the next next challenge? How do I make this better? Just never being satisfied keeps you striving. So um, it was a, it was a great talk. Any, uh, any, any final thoughts? Anything that you want to add? I mean, and not to put pressure, but on the road to life, you may hit a few obstacles, <laughs> like bicyclists. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Lama, for spending You're time welcome. with me. I really appreciate that. And as I mentioned, guys, check out uh, Tommy Savitt, the Tommy Lava, uh, anywhere you can. Uh, do you have a... Uh... Tommy Lava website. Okay. It's Lama. is spelled like the Dalai Lama. Right. So it's uh, TommyLama.com. And my Twitter handle is at Tommy Savitt, S-A-V, as a Victor I-T-T. -T. And then uh, also on Facebook. Yeah. And, and and like I said, if you're in Ottawa, don't miss an opportunity to see... Uh, and the Tommy Lama on Instagram, at, at the Tommy Lama. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk with me today. I, uh, I really hope everyone takes the opportunity to see it because it really is... It's unique, it's funny, uh, and not to be missed. And I look forward to talking to you again sometime, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you.